Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Cara, and I'm a soon-to-be scientist from France. I study what is called astrobiology, which is trying to find if life could be detected out of Earth. This is really cool, and as you can imagine, I'm much more used to being in my lab, talking to myself than being in front of people. But still, this is a nice experience, and today I have a very specific story I would like to tell. I love what I do, I'm really passionate about science, but the problem that I have is that my friends, my family, and sometimes even society do not really understand what science is actually about. That is why something like two years ago, I decided to work in science communication to make research more accessible to everyone. I will never, and when I say never, and you will understand why, forget my first classroom experience. It was slightly before the pandemic, and I went back to my primary school to have some science classes with the children. We were talking all day about bacteria, biology, and whatever I was trying to teach to them. And I was also spending my breaks with them. And one day, a little eight-year-old boy, so you can imagine that he was just this eight. I'm not really big, but he was still small for me. He went next to me and he told me, do you know that our president, I'm not going to name him, but you know the name. Do you know that he's crap? And I was just like, okay, what is happening right now? Like, I was just absolutely stunned because I was expecting this child to talk to me about a new Disney movie or maybe some trendy toys, whatever. I wasn't expecting to have this kind of political conversation with an eight-year-old boy. And somehow things got worse because all of his other little friends started to circle around me and to tell me, ah, oh, you know, he's really untrustworthy. Like he's always lying, he's making my parents mad and they were renting and renting and renting. And I was just like, okay, what is going on? We need to stop here. I kind of flee from the subject because I didn't feel comfortable having some sort of political discourses with children. But if I'm being honest, I didn't think much of it at the time, because as a child, you tend to really repeat what you hear through your parents, through the media, through whatever surrounds you. And also I've been at their place and I come from a neighbor in France, just like them, that often feels left on the side. So this kind of political discourses of distrust is actually quite common, unfortunately. And I'm sure that everyone here in this room has at least one specific story from their country that could pretty much justify why people distrust politicians so much. But if we are all gathered here, it's because we really want to bridge this gap between the people and the politicians. We want some trust back. For me, the pandemic was clearly a wake-up call because this is not really nice to say, and especially not here, but I used to find anti-politician speeches really amusing and funny. But then the pandemic happened and I realized that these discourses, they had much more concrete consequences on the people and on public health. And it started to worry me. At the beginning of the year, data showed that 55% of French people did not trust the government to handle the fifth COVID wave. More than half of the population and almost two years into the pandemic. This is an absolute catastrophe. And at the same time, ironically enough, a study was made in more than 95% country of the world. And they showed that the more people trusted the rulers, the less they got infected by COVID. Because the thing is that when you trust the science and you trust the politicians that are enforcing the science, you take better decisions. You take care of yourself, you take care of your community and of your health. So basically you have mistrust, equals death. And I know that this may sound a bit radical, dramatic, or over the top, I don't know, but decades of weakened democracy led to this. We are currently facing a lot of challenges in Europe and not to depress anyone here, COVID is not our only problem. We have the race for more sustainable energy. We have climate change. We have to tackle digital illiteracy. We have a lot of pressing issues that are future threatening and we need to take care of those. But at the same time, people do not trust politicians on these science-based issues. So what do we do? Well, first of all, I'm going to give you a bit funnier example because what I just said was really depressing, actually. Imagine if you were on the plane and you wanted to jump off of it. With a parachute, obviously. <laughs> we're safe here. 
and you have your guide on your side and they are telling you what you should do for your safety. They are telling you everything, like all the advices you should know. And for some reason, you're not really feeling this person. You don't trust your guides. In this situation, what would be your choice? Would you still jump or would you maybe take a step back and decide to have some more reassurance? I'm sure that most people here would rather take a step back. I hope so, because otherwise it's a bit worrying. And they will need more reassurance. And in the same idea, I don't expect people who do not trust politicians to follow science-based political measures without batting an eye or without having some critical thinking. But that is the problem, notably for a democracy, because we are facing challenges, like I just said, and we don't have that much time, especially for climate change. Currently, citizens in Europe are facing two main kinds of doubts. They are dealing with useful doubt and excessive doubt. Useful doubt is a skill I want you all to learn about today. It is the capability to see some scientific data and to be able to assess them, but with a critical eye. Next year is going to be the European Year of Skills, and my absolute dream would be that every single citizen would be able to see some science, to see the political decisions that are made in adequation to the science, and to be like, okay, we're going to the right direction, or to be able to point out sometimes the mistakes that are made. That would be my dream, but I have a problem. In this room, 63% of you all knew before they were 14 if they were going to pursue their education in science. Two person out of three here. Way before they had to make their choices for their studies and for their professional life. So we have a problem because we don't have a continuous science education. And I've seen it with my own eyes. I've had children in my science communication classes that were already dreaming of Nobel Prizes, while others, mostly girls, I'm going to be honest, unfortunately, felt like they were not smart enough to pursue their education in science. But this creates a democratic problem, because the little eight-year-old boy I told you about earlier, in 10, maybe 15 years, when he will be in the voting booth, he will have the same responsibilities as every single citizen and his doubts, his questioning, and whatever he sees in the media or whatever goes through his head is going to have an influence on the coherence of our democracies. Can we really let that happen? Can we really let people facing an endless stream of information daily, not knowing who they should trust, who they should listen to, who they should follow? Should we really let these people be vulnerable, facing immersion of doubts, People that are trying to enforce really dangerous ideology into our democracies. Should we really let that happen? I don't think so. Currently in France, we are facing the eighth COVID wave. Soon the ninth, unfortunately. But how many people can actually understand the graph? How many people can actually understand why doctors are requiring people to put masks on again, despite the vaccine? How many people can actually tell if my government is making the right choices in terms of collective immunity? Not that much, unfortunately. And this situation, it leads to people having excessive doubts. They don't know what is happening. They feel left behind. They are just lost. But democracy is about not leaving anyone behind. But this is what is happening. I'm sure that a lot of people here have a lot of idea on how we can make people more involved into democracy, how to not let people behind. And communication is clearly a key for that. I'm sure that some people here may work on tackling misinformation or making sure that trust breaching practices in politics are completely banned. But today I want to tell you about a new concept that is quite underrated and that is called participative science. Participative science is the idea that every single person can bring something to the table and use their research and analytical skill for the better. It's maybe a bit theoretical, so I'm going to give you a precise example. 
Let's imagine if the event organizer asked us to write a small report on how to tackle carbon emission in this neighborhood of Brussels. Some people here, they are going to choose to have like a sociological approach. They are going to work on how we could balance between personal cars and public transportation to fit with the people. Other people here, they may be more interested by tech-based challenges because they are more into science and STEM. Others may choose to work more on policies because they are lawmakers or maybe future lawyers. The idea is that every single person has some skills, has some knowledge, something that they can bring to everyone for the common good. My goal is far from making anyone a scientist. I would love to, honestly. I don't know if there are some STEM students here, but that's representation. <laughs> My goal is not to make anyone a scientist, but the problem that we have is that since we don't have a continuous science education, and since people are not really getting the scientific methodology, they are lost and they feel left on the side. And what I propose with participative science is the fact that you can be more involved into what is happening. You have science-based challenges and you have the possibility to be invested, to take part of the processes. And what's so great about it is that when you feel involved in your community, in your democracy, you have more trust because you know what is happening behind the doors. Science and politics shouldn't be a matter of a few people that are just here getting all the knowledges, knowing what is happening. It's for everyone. And I really want to insist on the necessity for everyone, even people who don't care about science, to care about science because science is part of everyone's life. Whether we like it or not, whether we've been trained in this field or not, the development of science impacts our daily life. For instance, nobody expected a pandemic throughout their lifestyle. And still, we ended up having to learn more about vaccines, about viruses. Even me as a biologist, I still struggle sometimes to realize that we had to think about such things. So it's part of a life and I need you all to be invested. So my participative science concept is something we can all work on together. We can all build some projects. We can all decide to have some specific problem we all want to tackle together. So for instance, climate change, we can all decide to bring something to the table. It's not only a matter of biologists, of ecologists, of maybe economists. It's a matter of everyone. So that little eight-year-old boy I told you about earlier, in a few years, I hope that he will be able to learn more about science and to invest himself. Because when I heard him talking poorly of the president, I was actually a bit sad. Because children shouldn't feel this way and actually no citizen should feel this way. It is not normal to have this level of distrust in our democracies. I'm sure that a lot of people here, their ancestors food for the Europe we have now. And it's really a shame that people distrust so much what we build throughout centuries. But I don't want to finish my speech on what we could do as citizens. Actually, I want to have a call to action to all the EU officials that are here in this room. I want you all to be involved. We need to launch some participative science initiative together. But I need EU officials to be also proactive. Because citizens have idea, scientists have idea, but we have still this small bridge we need to cross to have some democratic processes that are built together alongside with politics. Because currently we have a double speed society. We have politicians on their side and we have the others. And it cannot work, especially not with the challenges we are facing. But to be proactive, you have to invest. And I may not be really objective, but as a scientist, I mean, future scientists, I am also calling EU officials to invest more into research and science. And when I say research, I don't only mean in the private sector, because some official here may tell me that we actually invest in science. It is true, but not enough in the public sector. And when I say science, I don't only mean biology or physics. I mean also investing in our philosophers, in our sociologists, in our political scientists. 
because the way they see and evaluate society is necessary. Their knowledges are key parts in the challenges we are going to face. So if my message could be summed up in a few words, I would say that every single citizen has the skill and the knowledges to bring something for the common good in Europe. I need you all to trust yourself and to be able to know what you can bring to the table. Uh, you're not going to become scientists, but you can be observers, you can be whistleblowers, you can be writers, you can inspire people. So please use this power for the common good because the challenges we are facing are tough. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and maybe non-binaries. This was an honor to speak in front of you and have a nice night. <laughs>